first things first, congratulations to Izzy, who won the middleweight, who kind of kept his belt, sorry, um, against Paolo Costa over the weekend. And big up everyone too that joined in on the show. I did a watch along live stream. I'll be doing a few more of those. I did it on StreamYard, which I'm not really a big fan of. I'm going to just stick to doing it on um, OBS. I guess StreamYard works better because you get the chance to sort of like get the messages pop up on your screen, right? Uh, via live chat, which is quite cool. So you don't have to kind of go through it um, on the actual app itself. You can, and the app itself is a bit clunky online. Um, I don't like how it shares screens, but I'm going to start using OBS and just start streaming regularly. And I guess having my phone to the side and then answering questions that way, or just having this the chat bot um, um, sort of loaded up on my laptop screen. I'm sure I can find another workaround to sort of make that work. But pick up everyone that joined in. <laughs> if you had a watch along stream, that was really fun. Might do a few more of those for football as well, maybe going coming forward. But yeah, what a dominant performance from Izzy, man. Israel Adesanya versus Paolo Costa, the main event on a two main card fight, right? Fight night card. I think the co-main event was um, Dominic Reyes v. Jan Bachakovsky. A bit of an upset in that one because I guess most people coming into that fight just assumed Dominic Reyes would win uh, based on his performance against John Jones, where a lot of people believe that he might have won that on split decision, or at least in, at the worst, it could have been a draw. And I think, unfortunately, Dominic Reyes always also bought into that um, hype and thought that he could come into the ring, not 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 nonchalant, but he thought it would be enough just turning up, throwing a couple of hands, and he could basically put away John Blachikovsky. Um, but of course, as we've proven, as has been proven over the years with the USC, no fight is a foregone conclusion. All fighters are dangerous. Um, the UFC, as stingy as they can be with the pay, they're very, very good with the matchmaking. For the most part, you quickly realize who is good, who is basically a title contender and who isn't because they get matched up with each other very quickly. So if Jan Parkowski is getting matched up with Dominic Reyes, is there is obviously the opportunity that he can knock him out too and stop him. And as he did in that fight, he picked him apart. Um, with kicks and punches, probably I'd say a little bit similar to the approach that Israel Adesanya took with um, Paolo Costa. Of course, Dominic Reyes isn't as forward pressing as a Paolo Costa, but it was the same similar sort of fight. Jan basically kept um, Dominic Reyes at, at his basically length, um, basically did away with him as he pleased and sort of turned up the pressure towards the second round and basically fulfilled his promise where he said he was going to put him away in the second round. And it's impressive because he's, what, 37, 38 years old. You probably think that might be his last hurrah in terms of actually winning a championship. Um, you look at people like Chel Sonan, who people really rate and is into the UFC Hall of Fame. Never got, well, he got close actually, but he never actually won a title. So you know how difficult it is to actually win a championship belt, no matter who you're facing, no matter the state of the competition. Winning a belt is very, very difficult, especially in the UFC where you're constantly getting mashed up against some of the best fighters within your division, um, you know, every fight night or every Every card right so it's always a bit of a dog fight in that regard so for Jan to finally win it especially against somebody like Atomic Reyes who's coming off such an impressive performance against John Jones must do himself a world of confidence you obviously saw the change in his face when you're celebrating you kind of let out that kind of animalistic scream and then quite quickly he kind of it's sort of he sobered up and started realizing like the the um, the magnitude of what he's just done like he, he actually won the belt that was pretty cool to see him just kind of recollecting his thought, like being like, wow, man, I've actually done it. I've done it. I've won it. I've won it. Um, that was cool to see. And of course, he got a hero's welcome going back to Poland. There's a really cool video of him arriving at the airport and all the fans sort of ch chanting his name in a very Polish sort of way, yeah. right? Instead of kind of mobbing him like he would have done and maybe, you know, if he was English or something, they sort of like run up to him and just stand, you know, about five meters away and just start shouting his name in it in a really rhythmic sort of like monotone way. It's really awesome actually to see that. And of course, the main, the main card, the main fight, um, Izzy versus Paolo Costa now. I think, um, like a lot of people, I just assumed Izzy would win, right? But I also kind of thought to myself, you know what? UFC's mad, isn't it? I wouldn't be surprised if Kyle Costa just comes out, catches um, Izzy with something, or Izzy gets injured, or something happens and along the line, and you're tuning in, you're seeing Paolo Costa grinding and pounding Israel Desanya, right? That wouldn't surprise me if that did happen too. But looking at some of the fights that Paolo Costa's had, looking at his lack of real testing, looking at the lack of competition he's had in terms of actual ranked fighters, it did make me think that maybe, especially when, I look when you know, as the fight was drawing closer, maybe Paolo Costa had been rushed um, a little bit. His opportunity, right? He'd been rushed through the ranks a little bit too soon and he probably got his title defense or title chance or shot at the title a little bit too soon in his career because the fighters he's fought, um, compared to what Izzy has had to go through to win the belt. So they, they don't even compare. 
it's not even close but and and then of course you take into account his style and where he's pressing and he's always on the front foot and you take into account Izzy being somebody that's a bit longer who kind of fights on the back foot who fights on the counter it was a match made it was a match made in heaven for Izzy and a match made in hell for Paolo Costa and it did sort of transpire that way um I think if anything um Paolo Costa came into that fight having a lot more respect for Izzy than he kind of let on he didn't sort of like try and walk him down. He didn't try his bully tactics in the ring. He did at some points try to goad Izzy into like an exchange in the middle of the octagon. Like saying, yeah, you come, you come here, you come here. But of course, Izzy's too smart for that. He's too experienced, too long in the tooth to sort of like succumb to that kind of peer pressure-y machismo thing that can cut that low, that low you into kind of like questioning your manhood, right? You question your manhood and then you kind of get lulled into a dogfight. And then, you know, and that person's of course, like Paolo Costa, he's suited to a dogfight. So that's what he once so um, I'm glad that um, Izzy kind of resisted that urge but apart from that we didn't really see much from Paolo Costa now that could be because Izzy shut him down completely but I do think um the unexplainables like you know Izzy's feints um uh Izzy's jab uh Izzy's ability to sort of like essentially fight from range really did confuse Paolo Costa and he had no answer he didn't know how to get close to him because you know you try and get close to um Izzy and as he says he's got position he might not have power but he's got position and if he's got position as soon as you get close to him he's going to be uppercutting you elbowing you right hook left hook kicking you kneeing you right and then moving out of the way and uh back out into the centre of the ring, centre of the octagon, commanding it once again. Um, so that's why he's a real pleasure to watch in that regard because he has a very conventional uh, Thai kickboxing style, but also a very conventional sort of like, um, what's it, what do they call it? Is it Karate Go? What's that thing called? Kick Karate, you know the one that, um, that Stephen Thompson does? He has that kind of stance too where he's always kind of bouncing on his feet hands down, um, can throw from loads of weird angles, uh, regular stance, southpaw, whatever, do you know what I mean? Um, ambidextrous in that way too. Just a really, really, really clever uh, fighter and somebody who kind of is also very resistant to the to the takedowns, right? That's one thing I thought what might happen. I thought maybe Paulo Costa, because supposedly he has, he has a, supposedly this guy has a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt. Now, from what I've learned online, again, I'm a casual fan, but from what I learned, Black belts aren't just black belts everywhere. Black belts sort of like, um, sort of have a gradient in their relevancy or gradient in their kind of authenticity based on basically the school that they, that person's going to, um, who they're basically being taught under. And of course the fighter, right? Because sometimes if you're like, I don't know, if you're Zac Efron, you could probably get a blue belt quicker than some people can because you're Zac Efron, right? They they might kind of just, you know, uh, speed you through some of the ranks just for the look and to get you on social media and shit. I don't know. And, and just in general, just maybe to, uh, as a favor. So not all black belts are kind of are, the, are made the same. So I kind of thought that was the case because there's no way that Paolo Costa would have black belt jujitsu knowledge in his back pocket. This is his entire UFC career and not use it once. I don't think he even used it in... Um, in the contender series that he did when he was in Brazil. He didn't. I'm pretty sure he might have done a couple of under underhooks against a cage against somebody, but no real like actual jujitsu jujitsu that I can actually think of. Did he choke somebody out though? Or am I mistaken? He, he did, didn't he, right? Did he really naked choke someone? I think I've got it in my head him really naked choke someone, but I don't know. But in general, he hasn't really used it to a level that he probably should do if he has got uh, a black belt in jiu-jitsu because you would imagine if he's able to mix in his, you know, his obvious uh, ability at sort of like Thai kickboxing style, right? His ability to kick, uh, switch kick, right hook, uh, um, kicks to the body. He would be really, really dangerous with the addition of jujitsu into his game. But again, sort of suddenly turning that on against Israel Desanya, the title fight was never going to happen. <clears throat> Most fighters would kind of agree to the idea that, hey, I'm going to do whatever got me to the dance, right? Meaning whatever kind of got me here is what I'm going to continue doing. I'm not going to suddenly change up my game. That can usually be the recipe for disaster. So I'm glad he didn't do that. But God damn it, that was a one-sided fight. Izzy controlled that fight for a minute one to the end of the, to basically the end of the fight when he essentially TKO'd him at the what beginning of the second. Um, it started off with a kick to the head, which um, obviously wobbled um, Paolo Costa. And then of course he did that really great thing that he did against... Um, Robert Whittaker as well where if you get in really close with him he has this really weird ability and really clever kind of way or yeah really clever way and ability to generate a lot of power 
by just simply leaning back and sort of swinging from that position. So when you get really close to him, you think you can hit him and he's obviously got that really amazing sort of like matrix style where you can kind of lean out and sort of you can miss, you know, especially when you're trying to do some spinning wall kicks, whatever they may be, they might be a bit telegraphed for such a kind of, you know, long in the tooth tire boxing guy, but um, or tire boxing guy, but he has a really cool ability when he's ever in a clinch and someone's trying to get right in his body, kind of get, you know, trying to, basically as close as they can to hit him, he'll lean back and then kind of throw as many punches as you can. And I guess towards Palacosti did the same thing. That one was really clever because he ended up sort of purposely um, shifting his weight, I think to the right. Uh, Palacosti took the opportunity to obviously go for the kick with his right leg to the body. Um, Adesanya anticipated it, grabbed his leg and just started wading in on him as he's holding his leg, let go. And then as, as Palacos was starting to cover up to come forward, he kind of laced him with a couple of hits. He goes down, he follows him to the ground. And of course, you know, good night, sweetheart. And then towards the end, he does a little bit of a dry hump in order to kind of take the piss. But wow, what a dominant, what a dominant, dominant victory from probably one of the best middleweights that I've seen in a long time, especially in the UFC. Amazing, amazing, amazing fight. Um, just definitely... Uh, um, box office, definitely someone that you would pay to watch, especially when you consider his style, his approach and his overall confidence. And just, again, um, as small as he looks against Paolo in the beginning of the fight, he grew as the fight went on. I'm not sure if that was just me. I, I did start the fight thinking, wow, man, Paolo Costa looks like an animal compared, looks like Yoro Romero um, compared to Izzy. But then once the fight started to progress and he started to get confident, I don't know why for some reason Paolo Costa started to shrink. And Izzy started to get bigger, longer. You know what I mean? And that's the thing I think people don't realise. Like, Izzy isn't like Neil Magny. Or even Neil Magny too. I think these people, when you see him in real life, it's a whole different game. People can talk a big game about them being skinny in comparison. It's like when you when you get a regular bodybuilding guy standing next to one of those massive power lifters, right? They all look small. But I think small is relative. And I think, again, in the UFC, it's never really about, I'd imagine in most martial arts, it's never really about the muscles, right? The muscles can be are just simply aesthetic. It's more about um, whatever that kind of torsile strength is on the inside, right? That kind of, you know, that toughness that you need that doesn't really maybe exhibit itself in pecs and biceps and stuff. But yeah, again, credit performance for Israel Adesanya holds a belt. Now, supposedly, he's um, waiting for the winner of Whitaker v. Cannonier. Um, of course, if it's Cannonier, then that would be an interesting fight. If it's Whitaker, I don't think it's going to end up any other different way than it had done previously. But let's see what happens. The middleweight is a very interesting division. Loads of interesting fighters. They're ready to go and chomping at the bit. Chomping, chomping, chomping at the bit. 